Hello everyone and welcome to yet another episode of Darko's Game Dev Cookbook. In this episode we will be talking about the technique that helped bring most if not all of your favorite games to life during the last few decades. We will be talking about rasterization, so stay tuned. What is rasterization? Rasterization is a computer graphics technique used to display three-dimensional objects on a two-dimensional screen. Compared to other rendering techniques such as ray tracing, rasterization is extremely fast. Because of that, it's still used as a main rendering technique in most real-time 3D engines. The simplest way to explain the difference between rasterization and ray tracing is by looking at this picture over here. On the left you can see rasterization, on the right you can see ray tracing. They look quite similar, so what's the difference? Well, in rasterization, we actually have an object in the scene, and then we use various kinds of math operations to project it onto a 2D plane. So, pure math magic to kind of project it on this surface. In ray tracing, we do something quite different. We don't project onto screen, we cast rays towards the scene. So you can imagine this point as being the origin or your eye, so you cast a bunch of rays to your scene, and if you hit something, you paint that pixel on your screen. The catch with ray tracing is also that you can shoot this ray, hit the sphere over here, and then depending on the angle at which it hit the sphere, you might shoot more reflected rays from the sphere, or even refracted, depending on the material the sphere is made out of. And that is what makes ray tracing quite expensive, because you can shoot a bunch of these rays, and the more of them you shoot, the more real the scene looks. So that's the expensive component of ray tracing, but that is also why it looks so much better. With new hardware, ray tracing is getting a lot of traction, as it can be calculated in real time. Personally, I think this is the technique of the future. There's already a lot of games supporting ray tracing out there, and the first game that actually supported ray tracing to some extent, I might be a bit biased here, was Battlefield 5. I will talk more about ray tracing in one of my future videos. In the meantime, you can check my ray tracing tutorial series that will teach you the basics of ray tracing. The games you see out there now are mostly using a combined technique, where rasterization is used for calculating the base vertex positioning and initial color, and ray tracing is used for adding better looking lighting and reflections that look more real. In a bit more depth, rasterization is a process of mapping scene geometry to pixels. However, it does not prescribe a particular way to compute the color of those pixels. That is calculated using shader programs, which in modern GPUs are completely programmable. That wasn't the case in the old times. If you want to know more about shaders, I've got a video talking about them in a super light format. Make sure to check it out. Okay, now let's talk about how 3D models map into this whole thing. Objects on screen are made out of a mesh of virtual triangles or squares, which you will hear being referred to as polygons. Each polygon is made out of vertices. Using polygons, you can display pretty much everything you can imagine, kinda. The more polygons you have for your model, the more detailed it will look. Of course, with more polygons, the price of rendering the model increases, so it's always about balancing the looks with performance. In computer graphics, matrices are a big thing. They are the cornerstone of any sort of object scaling and rotation operation. To display a 3D model on a 2D screen, we use so-called projection matrices that define how a 3D point in space converts to a 2D canvas. So, to put it simply, if you took one of your vertices defined in 3D space and multiplied it with this matrix, you will get its position on a 2D canvas. Of course, there is more to this than what I just said, but I will tackle that in one of my math-focused videos. The result of this process is a bunch of triangles on a 2D plane, representing your objects in the scene that should appear on your screen. Side note, 3D models are usually represented in an object file, which contains information associated with vertices, including its position in space, color information, texture, and its normal, which defines the direction towards which a vertex is pointing. It is by using this object file that your computer will be able to render a 3D model on your 2D screen accurately. After you took your models and projected them on your screen, the final step of rasterization takes place. It's called scan conversion. In this step, all of the math that you did on your models to project their set of triangles on this 2D the plane needs to be transferred to a set of pixels that will be displayed on your screen. The most common algorithm that is used to make this happen is called scanline algorithm. This again is something I will cover in more details in a separate video. All of this is computationally expensive, as there can be many models with thousands of polygons in your scene. It gets even worse when you realize that there is roughly 8 million pixels in a 4K display. And if you dump the process down and don't take any optimizations into account, for each of those pixels you need to calculate the color 30 plus times a second. Optimally you do this even more frequently as the new unwritten standard is 144 frames per second. But it's not just processing power you need, you also need memory. The industry 
industry is for sure moving forward as the GPUs getting produced nowadays are more powerful than ever. We can all look forward to what kind of graphics we can expect to see in the future, of course, hoping that all of this cryptocurrency madness will let us have access to affordable GPUs soon. That would be all for this video. Hope you learned something. If you like the content I'm creating, make sure to subscribe to not miss any future videos. Until the next time, stay safe and bye bye.